I just started posting stuff online with no like I didn't really think about it that much I was just like okay whatever I'm I'm gonna create document what I'm learning right now and uh, I didn't like go at it thinking that I'm gonna like grow my Twitter or anything like that I just wanted to provide value like volunteering I think volunteer work is super important when you're in university and uh, it, it teaches you When I started university, I was going to study pre-pharmacy for about seven years, and I was two years into the program, and I was like, ugh, this kind of sucks. So I just decided, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, it just, like, I felt horrible, and my friends were like, why don't you try computer science? And it seems like something you would like, because I was, like, always, like, introverted. I'd always be my, my computer. I like to play video games. So um, they were like, why don't you try CS? Like, it seems like your personality type. And I took an introductory CS course. I didn't change my major, but I took the course because I just wanted to try it out and see what it was like. And I just like fell in love. So then I changed my major <laughs> and I decided like for the next few years, I'm going to just study CS. And uh, that's kind of how I fell into tech. As a result of like all the networking and like activities and stuff I joined, I started getting like different gigs. And so like my first job was doing IT at our university. And then from IT, I started teaching kids how to code for my next gig and then eventually landed an internship. And then I got into developer advocacy. So that's kind of been my journey so far, just like a rabbit hole. What I have observed is like if someone is in a CS course or is learning tech, basically the traditional path is to go into front end development, back end development. How did you end up being a DevRel? Yeah, that was also my accident. So I actually was trying to get into front end. Um, so when I first started creating content on socials, I would create like infographics on front end development because I thought that's what I wanted to do. I really liked it, actually. I, I still do love front end. Um, but I also really liked creating content and I like education. So um, so for months prior to that, you know, I was blogging. I was doing a lot of, uh, you know, work like that. And then also... Um, yeah, what happened when I got into DevRel is I was approached. And so Nick Kalyani from Decentology approached me and he was like, well, I see you're doing Web2 development work. And would it be possible for you to like come work with us as a developer advocate and you kind of document how to get from Web2 to Web3, like expand your skill set there. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's kind of like how I got into it. I didn't think I would be a DevRel for a long time because usually when you see DevRel, it's like there are people who are like, experts like they've been in the like field for like so many years and i was just starting um but i think like being a beginner kind of did help because i would document um a little bit more like i had like a curse of knowledge i guess so like or, or didn't have the curse of knowledge so like when you know something um like relatively well you tend to skip like when you're writing tutorials and stuff you tend to skip the parts that maybe beginners don't understand so yeah, worked out. <laughs> How does your day-to-day -day job look like? Yeah, it definitely def differs from company to company. For me, I don't section my workload by day or like by each day. I kind of section it throughout the week. So I'm somebody who, I, I work at a startup with only like three people doing DevRel. So uh, we have a, like a lot of different things we have to tackle. So I, I touch on all areas from product to community to um, to content. So what I do is I kind of break up my week. Monday and Tuesdays is when I handle calls and meetings and like anything related to partnerships. Wednesday, Thursday, I get a lot of downtime. So like, um, like throughout the day, I, I purposely do this. I don't schedule any meetings on Wednesday and Thursday so that I can like focus and like create content or like write or do something that I want to do um, in that area. And then on Friday, it's kind of like uh, my reporting day. So like that's when I kind of like round up. What did I do this week? um what are the metrics what like goal setting things like that so i kind of just like summarize and then if i need to i'll like uh provide feedback that's like my feedback day and things like that so that's when i think i touch upon like more product type stuff so um yeah that's kind of how i break break up my week is that does a twitter following or youtube following help you as a devrel it definitely helps i don't think it's required the reason it helps is because I think when you work in the more partnership or community sector of DevRel, I think it helps a lot because you have more 
exposure to like different partners and companies. There's a lot of times when people want to speak to someone at Third Web and the first inbound or the first person they contact is me through my Twitter DMs. So I think in that regard, it helps, but I, I don't think it should be used as a deterrent for um, you know, anybody who's trying to get into DevRel, you, like follower count should never be a requirement because it doesn't really matter. Like DevRel is capable of doing the work as long as, you know, you give them the resources to do it. If you want to grow your following as a DevRel, it's not a bad idea. You just continue creating content, have, your, you know, have like a little personality online and that's just how you can grow. But otherwise, yeah, it's, it's just, I don't think it's required. So you very smartly, uh, diplomatically said a yes and a no both to the answer so i will ask this question like what does your following mean to you like you have around 30k followers on twitter so mm. what does that mean to you um it means a lot honestly i i started twitter thinking like i would not <laughs> i would not be here you know i just i never <laughs> uh decided to get on twitter to like be you know like farm engagement or farm followers or anything like that i just got on twitter because like i like to talk a lot that's like how i communicate and even today like i'm not like too concerned about like the number i'm very grateful very very grateful because of like the amount of people who have supported me in the past two years i am where i am today so um so for that yeah i think i think that helps a lot and i'm grateful to anybody who looks at my content and thinks i'm funny or, <laughs> or uh you know enjoys like reading my tweets so what it means to me so i want to know like how can a college student basically or a new beginner into tech prepare themselves for this role because becoming a devrel how can someone prepare themselves for this i think if you just do kind of what i did so what i what i did was i just started posting stuff online with no like i didn't really think about it that much i was just like okay whatever i'm i'm gonna create document what i'm learning right now and uh, i didn't like go at it thinking that i'm gonna like grow my Twitter or anything like that. I just wanted to provide value. And I think when you go at it with that approach, you start uh, building up your confidence, like your ability to uh, create these different types of things. Um, and then also, yeah, uh, the other thing I really did was I was super actively involved in different communities. So, um, so like even online, I was involved in communities um, at my university. Uh, you know, I did a, a couple networking events with different software engineers and stuff and then also um like volunteering i think volunteer work is super important when you're in university and uh it, it teaches you skills that you wouldn't otherwise learn you know like just on the job and so for me i volunteer teaching kids how to code and uh it taught me so much and like it helped me like create content because i started developing more empathy for people learning so um, activities like that, I think, will definitely get you like uh, ahead when you start applying to these types of roles. Hmm, this totally makes sense, Samina. Also, like we're talking about content. So exactly what does content mean here? Is it only tutorials or how to do stuff? Or it can include like documentaries on languages, different languages or something else as well? Content is anything. I, I honestly, I don't think there's a real like barrier because looking at the way it's changed in the past few years, I started with infographics and, um, you know, that was really popular, like a popular format on Instagram where like people would just do carousels and swipe through and then they updated the platform and then reels became popular. So everybody's content changed, right? You have to be flexible. So everybody's content changed. Now people are creating videos where they're like kind of dancing and pointing at different stuff. You, you've probably seen a lot of those. So that that's a new format. Um, it works. I, I personally don't do it, but it works. And then um, and then TikTok came along and, you know, that's another format of creating videos. Um, I think anything is content, basically. And who knows, like in a year from now, maybe there's like holographic, like cheat sheets or something. So <laughs> just <laughs> being adaptable, I think, is is super important here. So Samina, like if we talk about getting into DevRel, what is something that a beginner can do? Whatever you're good at. I think, I don't think you should box yourself or force yourself to do something that you don't want to do. For example, I don't like, like creating YouTube videos. I really don't. You'll see, I have one YouTube video <laughs> on my channel, even though everybody tells me to do it. They're like, oh my God, Samina, you need to get on the YouTube thing or the TikTok thing. And I'm just like, it's not me. It's not my personality. And if I do it, I 
feel like I'm going to burn out on it or I'm not going to enjoy it. So I don't do that. And so for me, writing is really helpful and it's the medium that I like the most. So I spend the most time writing. I think it just depends on what you want to do. I wouldn't ever approach it like, oh my God, this thing is the most popular platform. I need to start creating content here. Like do whatever you enjoy mm-hmm. first and then you'll build up the skills there. And that will be like most important, you know, and especially once you go into a dev role team, it doesn't really, unless you're working by yourself, like as the only dev role, which <laughs> I don't recommend. But if you go into a team, you'll often be complimented by other people who have skills different from yours. So for example, on my team, I prefer writing. Uh, my colleague Raza prefers creating videos. So we kind of compliment each other there. He's able to create videos. I'm able to write. And uh, yeah, we're still able to flow like as a dev role team. Hmm, you mentioned a very interesting point that devrel also has to have credibility in a devrel position how much importance is given to your coding ability it depends <laughs> but i i think like with most devrel questions this one depends as well um so like for me i work in more community side um more like hosting events and like trying to round up things together so for me i don't spend as much time coding uh i have a colleague who spends his pretty much entire time coding he's also in devrel Um and then I have a colleague who spends half of his time coding. Um for me I I code a lot outside of work. Um I'll work on like personal side projects and stuff to just keep myself like in the flow and in practice. But for work I don't do it that much. If I do some coding it's like um what I'm doing is like I'm looking over a repository or I'm creating one like a a really small app or something and then I create like a tutorial guide on top of that. But it's not like I'm like sitting there in production and like worrying about like mm-hmm. pull requests and things like that it's just more more lightweight they are different um so <laughs> devrel has like a bunch of different the way i think of it it's like devrel is the word devrel for relations is an umbrella term and there's a bunch of different roles under it so the way i see it is like you have devrel at the top and then under it you have like developer advocate you have tech evangelist you have like um i mean you could categorize technical writing under it like if you have somebody writing guides these different roles fall under it and some are more or less like um i guess technical or like some are more like community oriented like for example for tech evangelism you don't need to um necessarily be the best programmer you have to understand your product really well and you have to understand mm-hmm, use okay. cases really well for you to be able to sell that um but like for developer advocacy you need to know how to code and things like that so um i've noticed that people like kind of interchange the role of devrel and dev advocacy which is totally fine i don't think there's really like a solid defined definition but yeah i guess that's the way i see it and um yeah depending on how big your company is too um you'll probably be filling roles that may be more or less technical because right now you know at a startup you want to build community so maybe right now my role is more community oriented but maybe a year from now we have more people managing that position and then i fall into somewhere else 